Welcome back everyone to our channel. Okay, let's dive right in. A fierce debate is raging in the world of AI, and it all started with this one single provocative statement. That was Jan LeCun, one of the godfathers of AI and a top exec at Meta. This one claim set off a complete firestorm of discussion and drew a direct response from another giant in the field. So what's really going on here? In one corner, you've got Jan LeCun from Meta AI, and in the other, Demis Hassabis, the CEO of Google DeepMind. We're going to break down this incredible intellectual clash to figure out what they're really arguing about, and more importantly, why this whole debate is so critical for the future of AI. All right, let's start with Lacoon's argument. He basically claims that what we all call general intelligence is just, well, an illusion. He believes our own human intelligence isn't general at all. Instead, he thinks it's just a collection of very specialized skills. So here's the core of Lacan's point. We evolved to be good at very specific things, you know, navigating the world, reading social cues, the stuff that kept us alive. But we're actually objectively terrible at a lot of other things, like massive calculations or certain memory tasks where, let's be honest, some animals can run circles around us. So the crucial point for Lacoon is this. We feel like our intelligence is general, but only because we're good at solving the problems we're already familiar with. And those problems are defined by our highly specialized brains in the first place. From his point of view, trying to build a single AI to handle all possible problems just doesn't make any mathematical or biological sense. And this, this is where Demis Hassabis steps into the ring. Hassabis jumps in and argues that Lacun is making a huge mistake by mixing up two completely different ideas. He thinks Lacun is confusing general intelligence with something else entirely. Hassabis basically says, hold on a minute. No one is seriously arguing for universal intelligence. That would mean being the absolute best at every single task you can imagine. He says that's a straw man. The real goal is general intelligence, a system that's flexible enough to learn and adapt across a wide range of different tasks, even if it doesn't master every single one. In fact, he points to a core mathematical law that proves universal intelligence is impossible anyway. It's called the no free lunch theorem, and it basically proves that you can't have one system that's perfect at everything. You know, if you build a car to be an amazing road vehicle, it's gonna be pretty terrible at flying. There are always trade-offs. Hasabis totally agrees with this, but he argues that these practical limits don't mean the underlying architecture isn't general. Hasabis makes the case that our brains, and by extension the AI models we're building today, are fundamentally general purpose learning machines. He even has a pretty neat comparison to a classic theoretical computer. Okay, so a Turing machine is this theoretical concept of a computer that can solve any problem that is solvable, you know, given enough time and memory. Hasabis is arguing that our brains are kind of approximate Turing machines. We're not perfect, we have limits, but our underlying architecture is general enough to learn pretty much anything. And this is where Hasabis pulls a brilliant move. He uses Lacoon's own example of chess right back at him. Lacoon says we're bad at chess compared to computers. Hassabis counters, saying the fact that a brain which evolved for hunting and gathering can even invent and play a game as abstract and weird as chess, well, that's the ultimate proof of its generality. We repurpose the survival tool for pure logic. That, he says, is what general intelligence is all about. But Lacoon isn't convinced. He fires back. And this is where he shifts the argument away from theory and toward the very practical, very real limits of reality. He claims this isn't even a debate about facts anymore. It's a debate about definitions. Lacuna essentially says they're just arguing about words. He sort of concedes that, yeah, okay, theoretically the brain might be a general computer, but he says its practical efficiency is so incredibly limited that calling it general is just flat out misleading. And to prove his point, he uses a stunningly powerful example. He asks us to just think about the human eye for a second. The optic nerve is the data cable running from your eye to your brain. And the numbers involved here are, well, they're just staggering. So, he breaks it down like this. Your optic nerve has about a million fibers. Each one is basically a tiny switch. It's either on or it's off. This simple setup creates a mind-boggling number of possible visual patterns that could, in theory, be sent to your brain. So, the real question is, how many distinct ways can your brain actually process all that visual data coming in? The theoretical number is, well, it's almost impossible to comprehend. You might want to get ready for this. The number of possible ways to process that information is 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 1 million. That comes out to a 10 followed by 300 times trillion zeros. 
Lacoon argues that the number of ways our brains can actually process this data is a fraction so ridiculously small, it's like a single grain of sand compared to the entire universe. We only comprehend a tiny, super-specialized sliver of reality. Everything else, our brain just dismisses it as randomness and completely ignores it. So, why on earth does this philosophical debate actually matter for building AI? Ultimately, this isn't just an argument over words. Not at all. It's about the fundamental goal of AGI research itself. And this whole disagreement can be summed up perfectly with a simple analogy. This analogy just nails the two different paths. Hasibis sees the brain and AGI as a Swiss army knife, right? It might not be the best screwdriver or the best knife in the world, but its true genius lies in its versatility. But Lacan, he looks at that very same Swiss army knife and sees a clumsy, inefficient multi-tool. He thinks that, compared to the infinite universe of perfect specialized tools, it's profoundly limited, and calling it general purpose completely misses the point. So is the quest for AGI a straightforward engineering problem, like one side suggests? Or, as the other argues, are we totally lost in translation, chasing a concept that might not even exist in the way we imagine it? The answer to that question will define the very frontier of artificial intelligence. If you enjoyed the video, then drop a like and comment, and don't forget to subscribe to Nexalith AI.